Hello and welcome to the Spring 2023 series on Viva Topics. My name is Naomi Moneypenny and I lead product development for part of Microsoft Viva and we're thrilled to show you the latest on Viva Topics. It was a part of a spring series that we have for Viva Topics. We want to take you into an in-depth understanding of the new features that we have. We also have two other sessions that I will recommend you to come and watch as well, which are on achieving and measuring success and how you build your knowledge sharing culture. So let's dive into what's new and next around Viva Topics specifically. But first off, I want to take just a little bit of time to understand some of the benefits and the value that we have coming with Viva Topics too. And this is part of a Forrester and Independent Total Economic Impact Report that was published out in September. And there's some great numbers on here that really help us to understand the types of value that we can deliver for you as part of your knowledge sharing culture using Viva Topics. You can see some great examples here from different types of companies, from CPG companies, from real estate services companies, being able to see that this knowledge sharing culture is really impactful inside of their environment. So for an average of, you know, a 7,000 person type of organization, you can see that we've improved employee retention. We've helped reduce onboarding costs, which is a massive amount of, of reduction here. And then making sure that we're improving productivity by helping you to find the content and the people that you need inside of the flow of work. Most exciting to me is this idea around revenue increase from actually having better productivity inside of your organization. So the way we use knowledge in our companies becomes so important and making sure that we're able to access that knowledge across all of our employees so we can scale the impact that we're having. So exciting stuff there. Now, let's talk a little bit about Viva Topics and an overview of what we do. First off, you can think of it as kind of that collective brain inside of your company. How are we helping to aggregate all of your organization's knowledge? We're helping you to figure out what are topics inside of your company. And those topics could be things like projects, they could be different events, they could be programs, initiatives, campaigns, things that are going on inside of your organization. And so imagine if you only had time to read through everything that you have on your internet, uh, this would be a great way to be able to do it. But of course, we don't have time but instead we have AI to at least help us take that first draft. And so we discover those topics automatically from the content that's inside of your organization. And then we're able to take the first draft of great topic pages. So kind of like a Wikipedia type of approach, but inside of your company. And then we can help you to maintain and keep that up to date with AI. Now, importantly, we've got to have people in here as well, right? So we want to think about the subject matter experts inside the organization and how they're empowered to contribute to the work that they're doing every day and share that with the entire organization. And so we want to make sure we have this great combination between people and AI and the different systems where people get to work together. But we also want to help with the AI to make sure that things are evergreen as well. And so we can find different ways to help subject matter experts have really lightweight contribution, maybe quickly update things, maybe save them a lot of time. If you get a lot of the same questions over and over again about, hey, where's the overview deck for your project or who on your team should I be contacting? This is a great way to be able to do that. If you help curate that topic page, then you help empower all of the people inside of your organization to find that information much faster and save you time as a subject matter expert. And then finally, this is about how do we help you to discover that knowledge in the flow of work. Knowledge locked away in a silo is not knowledge to being shared. And so we want to make sure, again, that we're empowering you with the knowledge that you need every single day and bringing it directly into the surfaces where you work. So whether that's inside of Teams, in Viva Engage, inside of Outlook, inside of SharePoint on your internet, bringing it to life and bringing knowledge everywhere you go. Now I'm going to hand it over to CJ Tan, who's going to take us through some of the latest updates that we have with Viva Topics and what's new in all the features. Thanks, Naomi. Hi, everyone. I'm CJ Tan. I lead the product management team for Viva Topics Engineering. I'm going to walk through some of the exciting feature updates that we have um, in Viva Topics recently. Let's start with Teams. Teams is a great place to share knowledge, to share what you know in a very quick way as you're as you are uh, speaking in a conversation. You know, it gives you a quick answer to say what is this, and you can respond with a topic. So we've got the topic picker that's in chats right now. Use the hash uh, to pull up the picker, select the, the picker that you want, and now your recipient has a really quick way to find the people, the definition, uh, the resources that could get them going on a particular topic that you're talking about. Next, we've got the first run experience in, in Teams. So as you can see that it's a very deliberate, intentional task of the, of the first person to share that topic to the people in their conversation. So this uh, first run experience will actually teach the users that this is available. Um, when you get into Teams in, at an appropriate time, we'll introduce this, um, this dialogue here where you can start to use the, the hash and then start to build a habit around that as well. 
And now we've got adaptive topic cards in Viva Connections. So if your organization is on Viva Connections, we've got an entry point here that introduces your users that they have Viva topics and there's a way that they can interact with Viva topics right in that, in that connections dashboard. <clears throat> what you see here are images of us, the us, the Viva topics application, finding places where this user is actually connected to a topic, suggesting that they are connected. And now the user can go in and actually select the ones that they're connected to, confirm those connections, and now start to really have a place where people recognize them as someone that can help them or get up to speed with a particular topic. Next, we've got um, the topic answer and the topic card across all our Microsoft Search properties. So that's Microsoft Search and Bing, Office and SharePoint. So what this allows us to do is give you an entry point into intentionally searching for a topic returning that topic back to you and giving you this nice overview with the alternate names and the description and the people and the resources that are really related and get you started on a learning journey on a, per a particular topic as well. Discover topic relationships. This is a particular feature that we're really excited to, to share that's available is that you can now go to the topic page and you can see the topics that are related to that topic that you've just discovered um, on that page. And it's not just the ones that are directly related to that topic. We are showing the ones from a second degree as well. So now you really start to see the network of topics, the people and the content that can contribute to that one, that one topic into that in the center of, of uh, this diagram here. You can take all sorts of actions on these connections. You can confirm if they're, if they're good connections, especially if AI has um, suggested them for you. And you'll see that there in the dotted line on the diagram. And you can also reject the ones that are not very good. And then also add new topics to that so that you start to create this network of topics around um, the one that you're looking at so that other people can discover new and interesting information as well. And language expansion. Now, this is really around making sure that the product and the AI covers all the knowledge in your organization, not just the ones that are in English. So now we've got language expansion support in French, Spanish, and German. And as you can see from these diagrams here, they really are integrated in all the places that the English uh, English capabilities were there as well. So you'll see that, that um, ability to search in different languages in, in these three languages on, um, on search within SharePoint pages that are in these languages. We also will do that automatic highlight so we can show you the, the information about that topic in the language that you've chosen. You can do that selection in Yammer and in Outlook and Teams as well. And a key point about the language expansion is really around the human curation aspect of it. Of it. So you can now start to create um, content or include content from different languages for that core topic. So that topic is still that main entity that we're aggregating um, information and content and people around. But now you can have that page include content from all these other languages that your organization may use. So English, French, Spanish, and German are the ones that we're supporting right now. Topics types is another addition to um, our feature set, which has been which has been really helpful in hel helping people understand what a topic is as well. Now there's um, a support that we have for 153 types um, in our in for for types of topics, and as you can see in this example, Epsilon 550, that a topic can actually have more than one type. So we can look at this topic and say, oh, I recognize it as a company, I recognize it as an organization, and it's also a group. And um, this type information is going to be suggested by, by AI, but of course, with the human aspect of the topics, you can go in there, you can add ones that the AI may have missed, and you can also um, remove the ones that it may not have gotten right. And now this badge can also be uh, elevated on the topic card and the topic answer, as you see in that diagram on the on the right there. So you can actually select one prominent type. And this is really a great way for um, a user to understand. So you can tell your users specifically, hey, this Epsilon 550, the one that we care about is that it's a company type. The information that you see around it is going to be around that type itself. The Another uh, great feature that we have is this ability to bring resources from outside of M365. So now within the topic page, you can actually connect to anything outside of a SharePoint resource that allows you to pin this resource, pin a video or pin an audio so that when we've got this topic page, we really are trying to encompass um, information and resources from across the organization and not just the ones that AI can can reason over in SharePoint. And 
We've also got some great updates um, from a, a visual perspective on the feedback questions. Now, the um, the crowdsourcing aspect of Viva Topics is really critical in in getting people to share knowledge and also to um, get the right knowledge out there for people to 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 learn from. So we've updated the user experience here and the questions that we asked to make it clear what we are 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 asking for feedback on on a particular topic. In this example, the description has been um, suggested by AI. It's showing you a source there with the project uh, project me overview DOCX. And now we've got the um, question there that actually is saying, hey, uh, is what are we helping you here? Is this is this description actually relevant to project new? No, you can answer yes, no, and also not sure because that is a is a valid answer that you may not know, and the system will take those those feedbacks in and try to improve the system with with what you respond to. We've also got some managed topics updates. Now, the knowledge manager plays a key role uh, in getting adoption within within uh, Viva Topics, especially just on just understanding what's in the system and how uh, how things are looking and how things are growing within that knowledge um, within the knowledge in the organization. We've introduced new search and filtering capabilities that allow the users to more easily manage the knowledge network from a single list of topics. And we've also added two really helpful columns around the topic score and the org topic score. These are calculations that are done uh, based on the richness um, and the completeness of what we think is in that topic. The org topic score is there to really guide you on what the system thinks it's found, right? So a system has access to all the things that you've decided to index. That's the score that we've given it in order to give you an indication about how complete that, um, that topic is. Now, the topic score is much more personal. That's the knowledge manager's topic score, the person viewing this. And that's taking into account um, any of the security permissions um, that trim away any of the resources they don't have. So now you've got a way to compare what you see um, when you open up that topic versus what the system thinks is a high quality topic. And then you can use that to contact the people or to update that published or sorry, excuse me, update that. Um, topic so that it does become richer and that more people can access it. So this is a good way to organize the topics in in the managed topics view so that you can pick the, the ones that you want to edit and publish and share more broadly in your organization. And this one has been been out since um, since the middle of last year, but wanted to set a reminder here that these these features and the functionality of Viva Topics is actually available in the government community cloud as well. So you should expect to see the topic configurations, this identification of topics and their attributes, all the capabilities around curation and, and all the capabilities around discovering topics on SharePoint Modern Pages, answers in search, Outlook teams, and search in Office as well. And of course, using that topic picker, that hash uh, topic picker to um, share topics within SharePoint Pages and, and emails and teams. And now we've and um, lastly, we've got a, a visual update, but one that I think um, many that we've been really excited about is to really let you know when you are using Viva Topics, right? So that you recognize you're you're discovering knowledge in a new way. So there's a set of uh, style and icon updates that build this cohesive and recognizable experience. So that's a set of feature updates that we thought that would be really um, fantastic to share with you today. And next. I'm going to pass it on to Manika. Hello, everyone. My name is Manika, and I'm going to highlight some new features that will be in the hands of customers very soon. So to kick us off, we have our Yammer integration. We've been testing this one with our preview customers for a while and are now getting ready to ship the capabilities of tagging Yammer conversations and Q&A threads with topics. So as you can see on this image in the right, the mark topic is being added to this question. And then that Yammer content will also show up on the topic page. So we're excited to have customers be able to integrate knowledge between Yammer and Topics and reach end users in this platform. Also coming very soon, on the People Profile card, you'll start to see Topics. In this image, you can see there are confirmed topics, meaning that person has already confirmed they're connected to the topic. And then also you can see here, there are the AI suggested topics as well. So it'll be really easy for someone to go to someone's profile and immediately learn what their expertise is in. And then they can also hover on these topics and get to the topic page directly from the people profile card as well. Moving into some analytics. So we're focusing on analytics to enable adoption and help organizations recognize value. In the topic center, we're adding an analytics tab and this adoption dashboard will be a part of it. 
So that tricky question of how do I begin to adopt topics will be taken away because this dashboard measures five key metrics of healthy topics adoption. And not only that, but it also provides organizations with the target to meet for each metric and recommended actions they can take to drive themselves to meeting those metric, metrics and achieve a healthy adoption. And then once this healthy adoption is reached, it's all about the value our customers are levering, leveraging. So both in the analytics tab and in the admin center, we have lots of analytics coming to demonstrate value. We know this is a big ask from customers. So in the admin center, we're adding a site count and usage and engagement charts, as well as metrics like top contributors and trending topics. And then um, in this analytics tab, we're breaking it down even further to show things like how users are using topics, the sharing of topics, contributing to topics, and of course, end users consuming topics in different experiences and endpoints. Okay, moving on. This is another exciting one. So CJ mentioned the managed topics improvements we've all met, already made, and we want to make it even easier and more efficient. So we've heard from customers that it would be really helpful to be able to separate topics out by their language now that we have topics in multiple languages, and then also the site they originate from. So this would help knowledge managers start to divvy up some of the work and have different business units tackle their topics. So that is coming very soon. Um, and that's just about everything we wanted to share today. Our team is so excited about these recently released and upcoming features that make topics an even more valuable knowledge solution in your organization. So thanks for watching. Thank you.